Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to my little corner of the internet that we call the Age of the Ring. Today's map is Itamar. I'm not gonna say it, but we're all thinking it. Anyway, for the top team, it's a Doggledore. It's a Snowy Doggledore. It's a Rondler. We're gonna get some vengeance after last game. I think he was DG that game too. It's a Big Jenkins as Erebor in the top. A Snowy Erebor. And first ping of the game, already getting hit with a dry spell. It's DJ Florin, uh, Netherlands hottest DJ, I guess. I, I I don't know where I get these from. Anyway, opposite them is a Harad. It's Mondello. I think we've seen him before. At least I played against him before. I think he's a bit of a scrubby player, but we'll see what he does here. It's an Isengard in the bottom. It's Istri, the guy that exists. And then it's Mr. D. So it's two Harad and an Aizen versus the Might of Erebor. Well, we'll see how he gets on. We've got Bell Tower Defense. We've got Dry Spell, as I said before. And we got some, uh... Warlords trying their best and almost getting the farm, but... Horseman on the mark, ready. So the next attack is obviously going to be with some Spearmen, which are right there, but they've run into Peasants. So Rohan's borders are well uh, well protected. Okay, it was Florin. I was just trying to remember who it was. Alright, Istri, trying to hit the forward base with some Wargs. Actually, that's not a bad shout. DG forward base, so we know how good that can be. And, uh... Doubling up pretty well here, because Ronler is about to lose one of his jails. He should probably ping to Sam for help. Sam has got the Ravens. Nice job with that. And Broken Rebel actually losing an early 1v1 clash. That rarely happens. And I think it's definitely going to continue that way, because Mahoodies are on the way, and they will definitely beat Broken Rebel. But yeah, look at Istri go. Taking out one jail, he's even got the torch upgrades. There's the ping. Uh, a little a little late on that, but better late than never, they say. And both jails are going to go down here. Smart thinking by um, Istri as well to go with the uh, quick torch. If you're sure that the enemy doesn't have any cavalry, then it's always uh, worth the investment, because the damage bonus to buildings with these torches is actually insane. Anyway, uh, rebuild. Oh, Sam doesn't have it. run with ravens. So this jail is going to fall. And Rondler, for the time being, is actually out of this game. And Sam is blue, and I don't really know what he's doing. I think he just ignored that ping. He does have a lot of troops in the mines. I think he just wanted to transport them through, uh... Or via mine shafts, rather, than just send them over. And he's probably going to lose this one to Istri, which is kind of annoying. And there was an attack by Harad, but that seems to have petered out now. He's got early Halifurians. Maybe he's fearing the beasts? Maybe some scorpions or something? Halifurians would, uh, obviously counter that. And they've actually both got the same strat. Early Mahoods as well, which I don't mind. I love seeing Mahoods. Warlord spam is definitely uh, stronger and more reliable, and you can just spam them a lot faster. But, uh, hey, Mahoodies were cool for, like, the first day that Harad came out, so, you know. Anyway, I heard a bird go down. I wasn't sure what that was. And has he got himself stuck here? Oh no, the bird was there. Okay, the bird must have died because there's the uh, summon. So he summoned them and died. I didn't even know he had him out on the field, but well, there you, you go. Well, let me tell you. So yeah, Ronla's going to need a lot of time to recover. He has Thrain. That's the best he can muster at the moment. Oh no, he's got Crimple. Tell a lie. I'm not sure how he had the money for Crimple. He basically lost everything. He invested in two jails and then lost them. But uh, just team game things, I suppose. And top team firmly on the defensive at the moment. But, uh, it's a, uh, marathon, not a sprint in 3v3s. Thrain getting fucked, as always. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, Harad just gonna bounce there. And it seems out of the two teams, the bottom team is definitely the more aggressive of the two. I just hope that doesn't result in too much feeding. There's early Gloin, alright. I'm not sure if he's going to revive the bird. Speaking of heroes, Gloin is on the field, but Shaku is as well, giving leadership to these wargs. And baited out the tunnel collapse. Very nice. I think that's a ping from Sam telling him, or warning his teammate that Istri is on the loose. But yeah, doing pretty well so far. Now, Crimple is leading the line here, and there are no heroes for Haraj yet. So while he doesn't stop the mill, he's still going to get a lot of kills. He has popped his summon already. 
I mean, Hootie's making a good account of themselves with that, uh... Or versus Crimple there. That actually... Um... Didn't go as badly as I thought for Harad. Anyway, Warlord getting focused here. And could easily cheap shot the Battalion. Very nice. A bit of the Achilles heel with the Warlords. Doesn't happen all the time, but certainly happens. Now, this tree's probably wanting to go in here, but... There's just not enough... Um... Harad distraction, I think. But he's going to try it anyway. There is a ping in the back. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a lot of harass, but... I don't think Rohan is actually too bothered, which is kind of funny. Okay, there's the... There's a the tunnel collapse. Shaku obviously is immune to that. His wargs are not. And if they were immune to fear, they'd actually be resistant to this. But I think it would be a little too OP if uh, Shaku gave fear immunity as well. Wouldn't make much sense either, but eh, we'll see. Alright, Shaku in the middle. We're going to change POV. I want to see what... Uh, actually, tier 2 for Rohan. Yeah, the defense is going swimmingly. And uh, one point away from tier 2 for Istri. And I'm not sure if Gloin died. I thought I heard Gloin die. It's kind of hard to see on this map. Oh no, there he is. Okay. I thought I heard his uh, death sound, but maybe I'm just imagining things. Suladan on the field. Ready to do Suladan things. Is he going to tech up? What do you want from us? Like, literally, Harad can do anything versus this DG. It's an open book. Like, you're already ahead. I feel like you can just pull off anything if you want. Oh, there's one of the Westfall. Very nice. Now, they will be able to kill the Harad Spearman. Even though they are one tick higher, the extra damage boost should prove vital. I say that. I said that, assuming that some of these were peasants. They're actually all Yeom and Spearmen, so never mind. If they were peasants, then I think it would have been a different story. But yeah, he's gonna pop his tier 2 to get one bizarre. Alright, there's Gloin Heal. Fighting in the woods. Shaku, there is one Spearman in here, but they are wounded. And look at that glow. Dude, with this, because of the snow... Um, I don't know what to call it, but because of like the skybox on this map, like the lighting is different. So yeah, Gloin's ability. <laughs> they just start shining like a light bulb. And Gloin is definitely dead there. A ruthless from Istri. Level 6 on Ishaku now. And I think Sam's going to have to either make some Vault Wardens or a lot more Spears. And he's going to go for Vault Wardens. And he might go for some Iron Hills as well, but... Uh, Men of Dale Archers could be a bit of a risk what with these Shaku... Uh, what with Shaku running around. Wait, did I just see... Kralumba? Okay, yeah. When I said he could go with anything, I was I was like imagining like Mumax or Monkeys, but yeah, no, Kralumba. Kralumba will work just as well. Alright. History has not used his tier 2, so I will swap over. There's the Wind Demon! And poor Rondla, dude is about to uninstall this game for real. Okay, if he didn't uninstall before Wind Demon, he's definitely going to uninstall for Necromancer going down. Kralumbar is chasing! And, uh, yeah, no, he, he... Wait, Suladan might still chase, he might mount up. Severing Strike would have... Ooh. Actually, you need to start auto-casting Severing Strike because it doesn't matter about the damage it does to heroes. What, it, what matters is the kill. So, auto-cast, you just kill any one of these orcs and your army gets buffed. So if there's one ability you want to order cast, it's just severing strike. It's too good not to. Because it's a it's a yeah, it's a huge damage boost. It's actually really useful. Alright, Necromancer's door gets put down by Suladan. He's got the horn of the Serpent Lord, and he's not gonna go in. He's a bit I mean we can see what he's up against. Obviously he can't. But, uh, regardless, I think he should still go in. I guess maybe he's just going to go around and team up with Istri. That could work, too. Cover your tracks. And, I mean, this map this map is big, but it's not like there's this huge open plane. There's, like, there's like a lot of uh, choke points. So, Shaku really shouldn't be having it all his own way like this, but whatever. Anyway, they're going to double up on Sam here. They have been spotted by DG, but there's not a lot that can... Actually, no, I have... never mind. Necromancer's back to full health. We're good. And is this going to be a feed? Is this going to be a massive mistake from Harad? Alright, Cav summon. Oh, his army just got... Oh, beautiful firebombs! His army caught on nothing, and now they're definitely caught on the Crimple summon. 
And that was a fee. That was what I feared was going to happen. You can never anticipate in your... Uh, you can never anticipate your units getting stuck, but... You should always be prepared for it anyway. Because it seems to just happen out of nowhere. I don't know what caused them to get stuck. Maybe it was one of the ambient units around the uh, mineshaft. But yeah, he just lost most of his army there. Um, for basically nothing. Anyway, Kamal plus tower defense. Now, Vow of Vengeance against the fort. That is such a Jenkins play. And by that, I mean, I have never seen anyone use it to defend someone's fort. But if you think about it, it's actually an amazing idea. Anyway, that's Air the Sun Rises, stunning everything on the map. And that came at just the right time. That came at just the right time. And uh, poor Mondello here, just getting absolutely destroyed by Florin. And uh, not with a lot of units, actually. Some Halifurians, some Westfolders, Urkenbrand. Oh, God, and now, and now Theoden. Okay, well, that could be tough. But yeah, I mean, if you want to Fort Rush, sure, but you're going to lose all your armor doing it. It's actually kind of funny. Um, I mean, I don't think he was Fort Rushing, but, I mean, better, better safe than sorry. Anyway, Fort Base from Istri looks very pretty, but, uh, unfortunately, Coin cares not for uh, Dunlending architecture. He's going to tear it down like a confederate statue. Not before these uh, Dunlendings actually come out here. Gloin one-shots Dunlending Axeman? Dude, he is so good. And it's funny because they even nerfed his damage in like the last patch, I think. So, yeah, that's crazy. Alright, there's the summon. Again, didn't really need to do that, but didn't want to make... Sh didn't want to let that uh, battery ram leave. AMA low. Obviously running into some spears somewhere. Wormtongue is on the field. And if... all oh, the crows are getting him, not spears. And Aoma is going to die here. Aoma, if you have your spear throw, you might as well... You do have your spear throw! Yeah! These people that think they can outrun a bird is so hilarious. Particularly those crows. The game does not care. In this game, crows are king. You might as well have just spear throwed someone. Anyway, Aoma's dead, and that's the big reset for uh, DJ Florin. Now, this could change things up. He's already low, so I think he's already had a confrontation with DG. Um, so they know it's coming. Golden King's on the field. So, Harad, even though he fed, he's still well and truly in this. Corsairs with the firebombs. Golden King cancelling leadership. Sorry, Gloin. And teleport in the back. Oh, okay. Showing off the skills. And gets the Mumak as well. Oh, God, that's going to suck. And no armor buff because Golden King. <gasps> Stonehelm's on the field. Gimli too. Now, Gimli extra on the Kralum bar really should be priority. Oh, never mind. Sam knows it. Don't worry about it. Oh, hit with the Wind Demon. Anytime. Anytime, DG. <laughs> Anytime you want to send some aid. And there's the Panic Weed. Yeah. It, it says it says herb lore. It's like a giant spring onion or a carrot or something. But uh, yeah, no, it's 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 the cannabis. Goin is smoking the cannabisy, and uh, feel free to dislike the video for me saying that. Anyway, another undermine. You cannot. Do you think the eyes of the white Jenkins are blind? Uzba duel as well. Okay, he might. He's getting close to Erebor Juggernaut. Um. Uh, He's getting close to uh, reaching that uh, moment where it's just unstoppable. And I like the way Jenkins is using these abilities. That was autocast, but uh, still, the Axtro was good on point. The Leap as well, very nice. And he might be fighting a losing battle here. Wormtongue is in there. Is Wormtongue going to stealth? No. Gimli cares not for your stealth. <laughs> and Wolfgar getting the fuck out on 1 HP. And uh, Stonehelm very low as well. And the crows are going to kill Stonehelm. Such a cowardly way to die. Yeah, that sucks, but that's just the way it goes. Alright, there's uh, the wit the uh, burning sand thing. I forget what it's called. Unrelenting sun. Yeah, well, that's what I said. And I think it's actually just been uh, negated by someone. Ah, Durin's Day. Dude, Jenkins... Doing well. A bit of a slow start protecting his teammate, but... Yeah. Kicked Harad's dick in. 
gotten a ruckus with the <laughs> history, and then cancelled the uh, the sun. So you know, doing it, doing every little thing that helps. So I think money is probably um, Ronla's biggest issue. He might need some range as well because these crows, I mean, they should actually despawn before Necromancer dies, but still, it's free damage on your faction leader. I mean, look at that. Such such free damage. A big clump of troops here. No Entwives, no Blighted Trappers. And he's gonna, he's gonna fall back. Alright, there's Ed, the sun rises. Weather abilities... Dropping left, right, and center. I think Istri should probably go for... Oh, Dave, he's gone for three tier twos. Never mind. No freezing rain. And Istri, master of just the sneak attack. Although Jenkins cares not, because he's got tunnel collapse on literally everything. <laughs> Alright, well, that was a terrible sneak attack. And even though Gimli's not there, Jenkins is going to push forward. Does he have Forge Blades? Or am I... No, wait. Are they... No, okay, it might just be the Aurora... And another forward base. Going to be taken out by Jenkins. Also free power points. Like, don't mind if I do. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. This is an over oh, problem, Bob versus Necromancer. Kamal's still full health. Necromancer is still in a pretty decent situation. I don't think he's going to get level 8 during this battle, but he does have Shapeless Malice, so he can retreat whatever he wants. A Kralambar even using derangement, which is such a massive debuff to the enemy. And again, the Crow is really just bottom team's greatest weapon, which is a bit of a sorry state of affairs. We might see a glorious charge here. Put it on Rohan camp for a bit, just in case. And actually very close to tier 4. And as I switch to Rohan, we hear Elfhelm coming out. That's not what you want. But yeah, if you just look quickly, minus... 50% attack damage and speed. Like, that's crazy. It only does a little bit of damage to Krellenbar. Anyway, forward base being taken down. Lots of level 5 troops there. And Istri just flushing money down the toilet by making things as the building goes down. I'm not sure why he's doing that. And is there going to be a glorious charge? Again, the crows and the carrion just pecking these boys. Just make some archers. Maybe he has and they've just been taken out, but seriously. I mean, he should be able to make it to the fort because... Um. Wait. Oh my god, Aerma just died a second time. Oh no, who was that? That's not Aerma. No, it definitely was Aerma. Lemau. And melee ends. Florin is way too good for that range stuff. Look at the attack speed when they're in melee. What the fuck? Is something increasing their attack speed? Look at them go. They turn into Prime Messi. There it is. Never mind. You can nerf him, nerf him, nerf him, but once in a blue moon, Ents will actually get the job done. Very well done. Fortress goes down. No points left, for, or no spellbook for uh, Mondello. And dude, the melee. The melee is unreal. Like, damage-wise doesn't surprise me, but just the speed. Anyway, this might be the last hurrah now. We've got Gloin. We've got Leap ready to go. We do have some Iron Hills in the back. And we got three heroes. Oh, four heroes! I didn't see the Saruman. They should be okay, though. With all the armor buff in there. Oh, God. Okay, no, it's fine. Jenkins, Jenkins prepared for this, right? He dropped Val Vengeance. He's getting hit with the Wind Demon. What did he do? Okay, Mumak is just going to trample into those spears. You should... Dude, if they have spears and you want to feed your Mumak, just... Oh, just stampede. You do damage before you die. Every ability under the sun is being used. Sam has been hit with every spellbook and even a fucking cat and now a fireball. And Gloin Heal has basically undone all that. And if you remember that the heroes will get buffed because uh, Uzba Duel are in there as well. There is no armor buff because Dane isn't in there, but they will get the damage buff from uh, Stonehelm. Durin's Day for an another heal. And you see what I mean when I said he's getting close to Juggernaut range, because he got hit with two armies, two spellbooks, Saruman, and all he got in return was level 5 dwarves and uh, a level 10 Gloin. 
So... Yeah, it's a tough one explaining that one to people who don't know what's going on. But basically, dwarves have this point in a game where they just become unkillable. And it's it's not even from that much. Wait, going teleport to get the really Sam? Really? We're trick shotting the XDs now? Really? We're trick shotting the XDs? Okay, well your stone helm's gonna die for your <laughs> for your uh cavalierness. Yeah, stone helm does fall, but that's okay. But yeah, um Stone Helm, when, Stone Helm will, do da will provide damage buff for everyone around him. Gloin is a little bit of armor, so I'm still surprised they tanked through all of that. Unless they have heavy armor, I didn't actually check, but those are what ones. Anyway, he did hit him with the tier 4, but iron plating negated a lot of the damage. Shaku does fall, Gimli's still alive. And these fucking birds, they keep ruining my uh, hitbox. Gimli does kill Christopher Lee. And I think Gimli is actually going to lose here. And there's DG. Oh, and a glorious charge at the end. Very nice. Obviously, Mondello is out now. And the fourth defense actually killed a lot of Jenkinson's army. But that's okay, because reinforcements have arrived. There's level 8 armor as well. Oh, man. That was a beautiful end. I actually missed... Theoden saying Glorious Charge, but I, I, I guess he did. Anyway, we finally got to see another Glorious Charge. That's the way it is. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. That was, um... That was a weird game. That was... A lesson in... Like, if you're gonna harass in 3v3s, you're gonna also have to... Uh, 2v1 a lot more. Like, there was a lot of harassing on each side. But, like, they needed to really double up on a single base and start to, sh like, really just, like... Turning it into a 3v2. Um, and they just didn't do that. And then, yeah, Erebor just did Erebor things. And that's the way it goes. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all the jazz. See you next time. <gasps> Goodbye.